begging, smooching, frenching, and playing tonsil hockey, there are as many names for kissing as there are ways to do it. Whether we use it as an informal greeting or an intensely romantic gesture, kissing is one of those ingrained human behaviors that seems to defy explanation. Do you know science says while kissing, couples exchange 9 milliliters of water, 0.7 milligrams of protein, 0.18 milligrams of organic compounds, 0.71 milligrams of fats, and 0.45 milligrams of sodium chloride, along with 10 million to 1 billion bacteria. Many pathological organisms can be transmitted through mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact, including those that cause colds and other respiratory viruses, herpes simplex, tuberculosis, syphilis and strep. I know that last part doesn't sound too romantic, but romance has very little to do with why we, as a species, are drawn to this very intimate contact. Hence the question arises why do we kiss? We may think a passionate kiss is a universal pleasure, but in some cultures, kissing doesn't take place at all. According to a new research, less than half of all societies use kissing to express sexual desire, and some even find the act repulsive. The study found that out of 168 cultures from around the world, only 46% of them kiss in the romantic sense. So, let's find out the reasons why do we kiss. Many animals actually do engage in kissing-like behaviors to show affection. These behaviors are so diverse, from dogs sniffing and licking potential mates, to elephants putting their trunks in each other's mouths. However, one animal kisses just like we do, the bonobo ape. This isn't too surprising, considering we share 98.7% of our DNA with this hairy cousin. Bonobos kiss for comfort and to socialize. Sometimes after a fight they even kiss and make up. We humans kiss for the exact same reasons, indicating that kissing might be ingrained deep in our DNA. Phylometologists, the scientists who study kissing, aren't exactly sure why humans started blocking lips in the first place. The most likely theory is that it is a learned behavior that evolved from kiss feeding, the process by which mothers in some cultures feed their babies by passing masticated food from mouth to mouth. Imagine birds feeding worms to their little chicks. Cute, right? Now imagine someone feeding you your chewed up breakfast via their mouth. This sounds disgusting to most people, but we humans used to do it all the time. From this passing of food, pressing lips became synonymous with love. Another fact is, Vedic texts from ancient India seem to refer to kissing, and the Kama Sutra, which probably dates back to the 2nd century, devotes an entire chapter to modes of kissing. Some anthropologists have suggested that the Greeks learned about erotic kissing from the Indians when Alexander the Great entered India in 326 BC. However, this need not mean that kissing originated in India, nor that it does not predate the oral roots of the Vedic texts. Scientists have revealed a very interesting theory of what happens in our brains when we kiss. During a kiss, the brain goes into overdrive means this lip sensitivity causes our brain to create a chemical cocktail that can give us a national high. This cocktail is made up of three chemicals, all designed to make us feel good and crave more, dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin. Like any cocktail, the combination of these three chemicals work by lighting up the pleasure centers in our brain. The dopamine released during a kiss can stimulate the same area of the brain activated by heroin and cocaine. As a result, we experience feelings of euphoria and addictive behavior. Oxytocin, otherwise known as the love hormone, fosters feelings of affection, attachment and decreased stress levels. This is the same hormone that is released during childbirth and breastfeeding. Finally, the levels of serotonin present in the brain whilst kissing look a lot like those of someone with obsessive compulsive disorder. No wonder the memory of a good kiss can stay with us for years. Well that leads us to find out, the purpose of kissing. Imagine a kiss being like a job interview for the elusive role of being someone's significant other. The interviewer is looking for the candidate who best matches the job description. Similarly, when we kiss, we are looking for a mate that best matches our genetic makeup. Wait, what do genes have to do with kissing, I hear you scream. Willa Darsky, a postdoctoral researcher with Oxford University's Social and Evolutionary Neuroscience Research Group, has found that kissing helps heterosexuals select a mate. Well, we actually have a group of genes called the MHC, Major Histocompatibility Complex, genes that form part of our immune system and give us our national scent. In his famous experiment, women overwhelmingly preferred the smell of t-shirts worn by men with different MHC genes from their own. 
This is because when two people with different MHC genes mate, the baby they would produce would have a selection of components from each of their immune systems. A more diverse immune system has a greater ability to fight disease. Therefore, opposites really do attract. This explains why we prefer kissing one person over another. It's in our genes. Interestingly, Willa Darsky have also found that people who kiss more frequently seem to be happier and more satisfied in their relationships, whereas intercourse frequency did not make a difference. In the end, romance is an ideal, it is part of the way we fantasize about the world and one of the best things about kissing, however, is that we don't have to think about any of this. Just close eyes, pucker up, and let nature take its course. So go up there and kiss someone today and enjoy the natural coke tale. Thanks for watching. Please comment below and subscribe our channel for more videos. We'll be back with more interesting stuff. Bye.